Welcome everyone, it's Vapors of Drake and it's time for some more Raid Shadow Legends. We are going to go back and I'm going to show a new setup for Magic Keep, this level Magic Keep. So, the thing about this level of Magic Keep is once you get here, this uh, becomes very difficult. Um, because you basically need to plow through extremely difficult waves. This is the first time I ever beat this. Um, the next one is even more vicious. Um, this is about the highest I think I could consistently do. Because the next one most likely will definitely kill off my, um... I mean, I could try it, but this is the first time I've ever done this one. The main reason that it's new is because we have Ugo in the mix. And Ugo deals with the block buffs department. And, um... So, yeah. She does the block buffs department for the waves. And that's generally what makes this more doable. Even if your gear isn't fantastic, is having double block buffs. This um, generally... Generally stops the waves. Because having one form of block buffs is usually not enough, especially if one of the forms is a single target. You want an AOE block buffs if you can manage it, which we did have it, I just didn't develop it at the time. So this is the boss that we all know and hate. Um... We're going to want to kill this guy on the right first before we uh, try to kill the main boss. <sighs> because we are not killing the main boss until this guy on the right specifically dies. Um, because the guy on the right is making it impossible for us to stick the block buffs on her and make it work because once once you kill him it's all doable um this is where a lot of, i assume a lot of our stuff dies because um yeah, the decreased defense is um, a major problem. So, yeah. Ah, uh, we failed it. But we're going to try anyway. Uh, because Syl died. I actually did this on auto successfully somehow um, before, but I don't know how I fail that manually. It's probably because the decreased defense and that landed at an inconvenient time. The problem is without, yeah, without block buffs we this fight this fight goes bad real fast if you if your block buffs dies so that's part of what makes this fight actually quite difficult is uh well also if your still of the drakes dies because that that also what happened there um I'm not going to sit there for hours on end trying to beat up the boss with the shield up. 
it's it's not good. That was a very bad fight. Um, so yeah, this is actually a less than 100% success rate for this higher version, mainly because our stats of health and stuff are just not high enough to ensure that we're safe. Um... So maybe actually, actually as an alternative strategy, because it's so easy to get bursted, I'm actually going to focus the one on the left. I know it's not the best thing on the planet, but I think it's actually a better idea because at this rate, the decreased defense seems to be the more potent debuff here because of the... Um, because of how much damage the magic boss does at this level. Come to think of it. Because you got to think strategically depending on the boss you're fighting. Do you want to live or do you want to take down the boss first? So since we want to live, we're actually going to target this guy first. Because it's at this level... Um, this guy is the bigger problem first because um, we don't want to kill the boss straight away. We want to we want to um, okay we want to cleanse that first off and we're gonna want to target the guy on the left. And then the one on the right. Because the main thing is we notice the, the difference with the decreased defense. That's why we don't want that decreased defense up. Um, because with the decreased defense up, we also don't want the guy that's going to do the block buff. The, like, you don't want the guy healing. But the more important thing is that the decreased defense is not applied. Um, because if the decreased defense is applied on this level of boss, and we let that happen, we're dead. Because the thing is, this boss hits so hard that if, you, if someone lands a decreased defense on you... You're probably dead meat already. So, yeah. Um, get the leech. Get the burn. See, it, it stops the, the buffs. You're gonna want to heal. See, this is this is the thing about this boss. When you're doing it, especially when you're not doing it um, on auto, you're gonna want to be very strategic. Thankfully, we have the vizier, so whenever a block buff is applied to this boss, it increases. And we have block buffs for backup here, as well as a cleanse. So this is actually a pretty OP team for this setup. Now, I don't think I have the gear necessarily to fight above this level, but this is going to be the one that I farm for potions. Um... It doesn't mean that I haven't been farming food, because I have. Um, the, main, the main thing is this death lock, whereby with the decreased 
the, the block buffs, if we just keep increasing the amount of it on the Magic Keep boss, they can't get their main... Because she, she doesn't have a cleanse. She just puts up a shield. So, if once that's up, she can't do anything in terms of shields. She's got her hands tied. So that's kind of what... See? She can't get her magic shield up, and she doesn't have a cleanse. Once you remove that one soldier, she doesn't have a cleanse. So, that in general. Now, for the other one that has a cleanse, you're going to want to use Cold Heart uh, combo. Because Cold Heart will decrease the... Um, The turn meter. Like so. Um, where are we at? 29,000. 85 to 53. Um... Yeah, why not? Let's summon some shards. Boo. Um. Yeah, let's uh, get that. But yeah, new team for doing that. I don't know what the legendary is. Freaking empowered, empowering raglans. What kind of whale do you have to be? To... The level of whaleage required to actually do that is disgusting. You think about how much you're gonna have to whale to 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 get those empowerments. Ugh, if you were to. If you were. Like, you have to have multiple Legos to do that. Like, it's gross. You'd have to have so many Legos that you'd have to, like, not care or something. Okay. Okay. I'm ignoring the termite now. This is, um, this is not cool. All right, so we're going to do some termite. Um, we're going to set up a different setup. Um, I'm going to set up these two as the damage dealers. And then... For now, Vergus with the Ally Protect, but we'll we'll do some other better stuff later. Like Mr. Taragi. Um, but right now the biggest problem is we're straight up ignoring the termite. That's the problem. We're straight up ignoring it. Which is um a wee bit of a problem. Just a wee bit. So right now, I'm going to be going for the... Um, the increase buff strategy. Now, there are several editions of this that one can do. Um, 
yeah, increasing these poisons repeatedly is part of the uh, equation, if you will. Because often when you get the burn on him, you can often keep the burn on this termite for a very extended period of time. Now this does not mean that we're not doing more Minotaur. We are, and I'm going to show you why. Because Minotaur is going to allow me to very soon get War Master on Kale. So that's, that's going to be something we all can appreciate for anyone who knows about the value of War Master. One thing I like about the AoE slams is it always goes on that Vogoth. So the Vogoth makes sure that the Vogoth makes sure that all the damage is soaked. Unfortunately, <clears throat> Ninja is not getting any of his burns on, which is a bit unfortunate. I mean, we still have a fair amount of poison, so the poison's going to account for something, right? Um, I still, I still want to finish his masteries because now I realize it's in my power to finish his masteries. That's the thing. It's in my power. So... We are very close to just straight up doing it. To straight up. To straight up getting this done. To, to get the masteries done. Because getting the masteries done is going to drastically improve our clan boss damage. Granted, I had to get all of the um, regular scrolls and then some of the other scrolls. Now, although we can do it manually, I can show you it done auto, and I think I already have. But um, that's, that's what I think I'm going to need to do. This was not the most optimal run because we didn't get both the poisons and the um, and the other one on there. But yeah, getting the War Master is going to be the biggest improvement. That I can make to this uh, this clown's clan boss, I'm pretty sure. 
because it's going to allow each blow to do like 30,000. Like each blow. This number will be even higher. Um, where are we at? So here's the other process that I was doing a lot of. <sighs> Putting campaign on auto and farming food for more crazy champions. Now, doing this on auto actually is faster than doing it on manual in some situations. Um, so we're gonna do, um, not more Minotaur, well, I will be doing more Minotaur actually later. Is not, now I realize See, the, the thing, my problem with going past stage 15 is I don't know if I can keep, I don't know if I could keep the, the, the stuffs alive. I don't think I can keep the, um, the members alive. Um, so we're just going to grind this out real quick. Because again, I don't have much time and I have to keep I have to keep the pressure on. They've got to feel my ambition. They've got to feel it burning in their soul. But yeah, this is the highest I think I can do cuz after that the rest of these guys are going to die. Let's be honest, they're going to die. And the only, the only way to survive them, by the way, just want to point this one out. The only way we're going to survive this is, um, the only way we're going to survive this is by, um, Killing the one on the left first. And the reason I say kill the one on the left is because this is the one that throws the drop defense, which at this point is going to be incredibly dangerous. Because we're not aiming to kill her. We're aiming to for long-term survival purposes. As you can see... If he puts the decreased defense on us and she throws that, we're dead. We are completely dead. So then we kill this guy, who is incredibly tanky, by the way. If if you haven't if you haven't noticed. Yeah. Um, Ugo's brew is useful in a tight situation because um, okay, yeah. Got her shield down. Now I do that. Now we try to increase the duration.
Because see, you're going to want to put them under the veil so that he has more issues. She has more issues. You don't want her to have a... Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do Ugo's brew here because you don't, you don't want to be low when fighting this boss. Because if you are... You're probably dead. Getting a leech on her would be really beneficial. As you can see, though, decreasing her defense is a major asset. Because it stops the boss from literally mocking the living hell out of you. Because that's the main objective here. That's what that boss does. If you don't control the boss, the boss controls you. I probably can't do this, but we're going to try it anyway. So the main strategy, as we've already um, established, is we got to get past the waves, um, get them to attack Vogoth and Drakstar. And with that, we should be able to do a fair amount. Um, the boss itself is going to be incredibly dangerous. Um, this is like the edge of existence for me because this is, this is basically final Minotaur level of evil, if you will. Um, the main reason we bring the two block buffs is to try to contain to try to contain the Wicked Sucker, which is this boss. And you'll see why once we get there. As this is by far the most dangerous I've attempted yet, the most dangerous Boss, I've probably attempted this whole clan v clan other than clan boss himself. Um, here we're going to want to use Ugo's Brew. Because without that, actually, you know, we don't. Because he only he remains. And he's provoked. But okay, like. What my point was is if he wasn't provoked, we would be in a world of hurt here. Now, from memory, these don't change. So this one on the right specifically is a problem. I mean on the left, excuse me. Uh, the one on the left is a problem because does that and at this point if the boss takes a turn and we don't have it cleansed we are probably dead like straight up dead because um We're straight up dead because decreased defense at this at this level decreased defense 
as you can clearly see, is so dangerous that if you... See, this is why we can't do this version. This is why. Because if we don't cleanse that decreased defense off, we just all die like it would happen in Arena. That's why. We have, to, we have to rotate it around enough, and we have to be tanky enough that the decreased defense won't instantly KO us. That's why I can't do it. At least I've, I'm trying to figure out what the, the limit, why, what is my limit? Why is the limit the way it is? The main problem is our defense is not high enough. So when you decrease defense on a bot like that high, yeah, you're probably dead. Just want to put it out there, you're probably dead. That's the that's the problem with the higher degrees of magic keep is that once that once you don't deal with the one that decreased defense fast enough and if you, you like they just blow you up they blow you up hard like cuz that guy that guy puts the decreased defense lands it on you and once you get to that level of spear of magic keep the the sucker just is like no because we're not beating that with just vogoth vogoth is just there to keep us surviving that's what that's what uh vogoth is there for unfortunately Um, getting through this waves is very difficult and dangerous. And the boss is even more so. So, generally speaking, also, I have a bad feeling that our accuracy is going to be impaired. Um... This is bad. I think I wasted the Ugo's brew. Because that's going to smack. Okay. It didn't smack as hard as it could have. So we should be grateful on that note. Um, but it could now. It could easily now. This is bad. Because some very in bad incidents have occurred. Ooh, ooh, snap. Okay, yeah, no, we've we failed this fight. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I failed on a number of levels. Um, so what is, is our mission again? Yes, let's do that mission. Shall we? Though well, we're starting the... Um, we're... We're starting the mission for um, Arbiter now.
because um, this is the next mission. Involves Potion Keep, which is just a coincidence. Because this keep opened and because it's fur and clan versus clan. Now, the main thing I think is to kill the one on the right. Could be wrong on that score. We just really just want to clear these soldiers out. I'm not exactly sure which one does which debuff cuz that will that will tell us which one to target. Now we're not going to want to attack her with the specialty um the specialty attack until after she drops her guard because she will drop it. See? Like so. Well, then once she drops that, we're going to be um, putting heal reduction on her. And then we're going to try to put some block buffs. And then it'll be up to Vogoth and Vizier to extend these buffs to kingdom come and to stop her from taking a turn we use the cold heart heart seeker to it's a little difficult and this team was not easy to assemble because here's the thing the vizier was an accident it was an accident looking for burringiri and cold heart was another accident that happened during clan v clan back when i had more shards so there was that. So yeah, we're definitely doing this mission. Okay, what's the highest we've ever done? And I'm pretty sure it involves Cold Heart. I'm pretty sure. I am pretty sure. So yeah, we are going to have to do a lot more of this key in order to get the five superior potions. This is going to drastically boost my clan contribution straight up. This is definitely, uh, yeah, and I have been posting more Avion 4 content. I was posting uh, fighting the, uh, the evil Frost Wolves. Um, the ending and the journey to the ending are very sticky. The ending is even stickier than the journey to the end. So when you see the end of that, don't say I didn't warn you. It's a very rough ride. Okay, so I kind of determine... Each one does a thing. I'm going to aim for the one on the right. But I don't know. Okay, that's the decreased accuracy. But is that the one that leads to death? I can't tell what this one actually does. Does he stun or what? If he blocks debuffs, I want him dead. You want them dead anyway, but um, we're going to want to go for block buffs. Um, and then Heart Seeker to decrease its turn meter. 
and to do damage, obviously. And then from there, try to increase the duration. Unfortunately, Vizier is of the negative affinity. And unfortunately, Heartseeker's on cooldown, so that's going to allow her to take a turn, which is the very last thing I want her to do. Because her taking a turn is not great. Because generally, you want her bound up. Generally speaking, you want her bound up. You don't want her running away with block debuffs. Because, yeah, you, you, don't, you don't want that. Like, her doing that was a major, uh, a major black eye, if you will. Major black eye on my part. Because you do not, and I repeat, you do not want her to get a turn. Yeah, you do not, you want to shove the turn meter back into her skull and then increase these um, debuffs. Unfortunately, he is, okay, there we go. That's what we needed. Because the main, the main thing is you don't want her healing prematurely or she will randomly heal for an imperial crap ton. And you don't want that. Because my mission here is to try to get these elixirs. I think the highest one I can do consistently is a bit one after this because of my gear, unfortunately. But I still got to do it. Okay, so, yeah, we're going to do some arena. Uh, this looks very much like a... Vogoth favoring game. Let's see what we can do. This is still very scary because they have Magnar. Uh, Magnar is uh, extremely uh, dangerous. Um, the thing is, I'm actually starting to fear Thylesia more, strangely, because that Hex debuffs can lead into some very... very unfavorable things. Um... Let's try this. Because I don't trust the way this works. So I'm going to try to... Do that. We're going to target the Mausoleum Mage because... He's going to cause me a lot of trouble... And then we're going to target Genjin. And then we're going to go for the starter champs. I do have Kale. I mean, I have both Kale and Aethel. I just haven't... I haven't 60 to Aethel. Yet. Ever. I mean, I could. But it's going to take a while. Obviously. And she's still not... 
She's still not as strong as um There we go. Um Hmm. I'm going to shove an armiger in there just to be funny and weird in the mind. Now let's do all spirit. I'll take that. We'll take that. Um, this we can do with a special cocktail. Let's try to do it force affinity only. Um, I'm guessing I'd want Manaya. I think I do need to rank six Manaya at some point because I need more force affinity. I don't know. I wanted to do something goofy and weird in the mind. Believe it or not, Manaya actually hits really hard even as a level 50. I haven't even bothered to max her yet. But I'm starting to think that maybe maxing her is not the worst thing in the world. Okay. We're obviously going to want to summon him 10 at a time. We got a rare. Another dupe channeler. You've got to be kidding me, man. Damn it. Okay. Is he useful as a faction guardian? Uh, skinwalkers. I've got so many dupes of these, man. I, the hell. More dupes. <laughs> oh, God. This sucker's ugly. I don't even want to know. I don't, I don't think I even want him on my team because he's so ugly. Jeez, man. Okay, so where are we at in terms of... Well, we're going to be doing more potion keeps in the next episode. I'll see you all then.